Hi, I'll be reading this book, okay? Chapter, chapter one, duly demented, demented. The hardest day of the summer so far was drawing to a close and a drowsy silence lay over the large square houses of Pivot Drive. Cars that, that were usually gleaming stood dusty in their drives and lawns that were, that were once emerald green lay parched and yellowing. The use of horse of horse pipes ha had been banned due to drought. Due to drought, deprived uh, of the usual car washing and law and law mowing pursuits, the inhabitants of Pivot Drive had retreated into the shade of the cool houses, windows th windows thrown wide in the hope of tempting in a non-existent breeze. The only person left outdoors was a teenage boy who was lying flat on his back in a flower bed outside number four. Outside number four. He was a skinny, black-hilted, bee-speckled boy who had the pinch, the pinch, slightly unhealthy look of someone who who was grown a lot in a, in a short sp in a short space of time. His jeans were torn and dirty. His T-shirt baggy and faded, and the soles of his trainers were, were peeling away from from the apples. Harry Potter's appearance did not didn't, did not did not endear him to the neighbors, who were the sort of people who who thought scruffiness ought to be to be punishable by law. But at, but as he had had hidden had had hidden himself behind a large I, a barn, a, hidden himself behind a large, a large hydrangea bush. This evening, he was quite invisible to passers-by. In fact, the only, the only way he would be spotted was if his uncle Vernon or Aunt Petunia stuck the, their heads out of the, li of the living room window and looked straight down into the flower bed b below. Below. On the whole, here we thought he was to be congratulated on his idea of hiding here. He was not, he was not perhaps very comfortable lying on the hot, hard earth, but on the other hand, nobody was glaring at him, grinding the, the teeth so loudly that he could not that he could not hear that that, that he could not hear the news or or shouting nasty questions at him as as it happened as it happened every time he had tr tried sitting down in the living room and watching television with his aunt and uncle and uncle almost Almost as though his thoughts had floated through the open window, Vaughn and Dursley, Harry's uncle, suddenly spoke, glad to see the 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 boy. The boy stopped trying to butt in. Where is he anyway? Don't know," said Aunt Petunia unconsolably. "Not in the house." Under Vernon grunted, watching the news. He says, "Satan." He says, "Satanly." I'd like to know what he's he's really up to as if a normal boy cares what's on the the news. Dudley hasn't got a clue what's going on. Doubt he knows who the who the prime minister is any anyway. It's not as if, as if there'll be there'll be anything about his lot on our news furnish. Said Aunt Petunia, the window's open. Oh, yes. Sorry, dear. The Dursleys fell silent. Here we listened to a jingle about fruit in brand breakfast cereal. While he watched Miss Fig, a batty, cat-loving old lady, for nearby, for nearby Worcester, Worcester Walk, Amber slowly passed. 
She was planning and murdering to herself. Harry was very pleased that he were that he was concealed behind the bush. Miss Pig had recent had recently taken taken to 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 asking him a round for tea whenever she met him in the street. She had rounded the corner and banners from view be, before Uncle Vernon's voice floated out of the window again. Again. Dutter's out for tea at the P-O-L-K-I-S-S-E-S, said Petunia fondly. He's got so, so many, so many little friends. He's so popular. Harry repressed this, repressed this now with difficulty. The Dursleys really, really were astonishingly stupid about this undeadly. They, they had swallowed all, all his dim-witted lies uh, about having tea with a different member of his gang every night of the summer holidays. Harry knew perfectly well that Dudley had not had not been had not been been to tea anywhere. He and his gang spent every evening vandalizing the play park, smoking on street corners, and throwing stones at passing cars and children. Harry had 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 had, had Harry had had seen them at it during his evening walks around Little Western King. He had spent most of the holidays wandering the wandering the streets, scavenging newspapers from bins along the way. The opening notes of the mu of the music that honored the seven o'clock news reached Harry's ears, and his stomach turned over. Perhaps tonight, after a month of waiting, would be the night. Record numbers are stranded. Holidaymakers fill fill airports as the as the Spanish as the Spanish bagger bagger bag, as the Spanish bagger handler handler strike reaches its second week. Get them a lifelong siesta. I would snarled Uncle Vernon over the end of the newsreader's sentence. But no matter outside. In the flower bed, Harry's stomach seemed to unclench. If anything had happened, it would surely have happened the first item on the news. Death and, and destruction were, were, were more important than stranded holiday makers. He let out a long, slow breath and stared up at the brilliant blue sky. Every day this summer had been the same detention the expectation, the temporary relief, and the and the mounting tension again, and always growing, growing more more insistent all the time. The question of of why of why nothing had happened yet. He kept listening just in case, just in case there was there was some small clue, just in case there was some small clue not. Not recognized for what it, for what it really was by the mugglers, an unexplained disappearance, perhaps, or some strange accident. But the but the bankage handler strike was followed by news on the drought in the in the southeast. I hope he's listening next door. Next door bellowed Uncle Vernon with with the sprinklers on at three. In the morning, then, then a helicopter that that had almost crashed in a field in S U R R E Y. Then a famous actress's divorce from from her famous husband. As if we are interested in the sordid affairs, sniff, sniffed Aunt Petunia. He would follow. He would follow the case obsessively. In every magazine, she could lay her bony hands on. Hands on. Harry closed his eyes against the now blazing evening sky. As the newsreader said, and finally, B-U-N-G-Y, the, the bungee, has found a, a novel way of keeping cool. 
This time a bungee who lives at the five at the five feathers in Bronsley has long to to water ski. Mary Dawkins Mary Dawkins went to find to find out more. Harry opened his eyes again. If they had reached water skiing water skiing B U D G E R I G A A R S there was nothing else worth hearing. He walked cautiously onto his front and raised himself onto his knees and elbows, preparing to crawl out from under the window. Under the window. He had moved about two inches when several things happened in very quick succession. A loud echoing crack broke the sleepy broke the side crack head. Crack broke the sleepy si silence like a gun shot. A cat streaked out from under a park car and flew out of sight a shriek. A bellowed oath and the sound of breaking china came from the Dursley's living room, and as though Harry had, had been waiting for the for this signal, he jumped to his feet at the, at the same time pulling from Fully fun. The waistband of his jeans are thin, wooden, wooden one, as if he, as if he were unseething, a sword. But before he could draw himself up to full height, the top of his head collided with the door's leaves, open window, and there was all in cra crash. Made Aunt, made Aunt Petunia scream even louder. And we felt as if. His head had been split in two, eyes streaming each way, trying to focus on the street and spot the source of the noise. But he, ha but he had, but he had barely stag, but he had barely staggered, staggered upright again when two, when two large purple hands reached through the open window. And closed tightly around his throat. Put it away, Uncle Vernon snarled into Harry's ear. Now, before anyone sees, get off me, Harry grabs. For a few seconds, they, they struggled. Harry pulling at his uncle's sausage like fingers with his left hand, his, his right maintaining a firm grip on his raised wand. Then, as, as the pain in the top of Harry's head, head gave, gave a particularly nasty throb, Uncle Vernon yelped and released Harry as though he had received an electric shock. Some invisible force seemed to, ha to have surged through his, his nephew, making him impossible to hold. To hold. Panting, Harry fell forward over the hydrangean bush, straightened up and stared, and stared around. There was no sign of what had caused the loud quacking noise, but there were, but there were several, several faces peering, peering through various nearby windows. Harry stuffed, <laughs> stuffed, stuffed. His wand hastily back into his jeans and tried to look innocent. Lovely evening, shouted Unc Vernon, wavering at Miss Number Seven, who was glaring from behind her neck curtains. Did you hear that car backfire just now? Gave Petunia and me quite a ton. Quite a ton. He continued to grin in a horrible, maniac way until all the curious neighbors had disappeared from their various windows. Then the grin became a grimace of rage. As he beckoned Harry back toward him, Harry moved a few steps close, closer, taking care, taking care to stop just short at the point at which Uncle Vernon's outstretched hands could resume. They're strangling. What the devil do you mean by it, boy? asked Uncle Vernon in a croaky voice that trembled with fury. What do I mean by what? said Harry coldly. 
He kept looking left, left and right up the street, still hoping to see the person who who had made the cracking noise, making a whack, making a racket like a like it, like it, like a starting like a startling pistol. Right, right outside our. I didn't make that noise," said Harry, from firmly. And Petunia's thin, horsey, horsey face now now appeared beside Uncle Vernon's white purple one. She looked livid. Why were Why were you looking under our window? Yes, yes. Good point, Petunia. What were you doing under? Our window boy, listening to the news," said Harry in a resigned voice. His his aunt and uncle exchanged looks of outrage. Listening to the news again? Well, it changes every day, you see," said Harry. "Don't you be clever with me, boy. I want to. I want to. to, to, to I want to to know what." You are what you are. Will Willie up? Will Willie up to? And don't and don't give me any more of uh, this listening to the news toss. You know perf perfectly well that your lot. Careful, Vernon. Breathe, Aunt Petunia. And Uncle Vernon lowered his voice so that so that he so that Harry could barely hear him. That you that's your lot. That's your lot. Don't don't get on our news. That's all you know," said Harry. The Dursleys goggled at him for a few seconds. Then Aunt Petunia said, "You're a nasty little liar." What are all those? She too lowered her voice so so that Harry had to had to lip read the next word. Our hours hours doing if they are if they are not if they are not bringing. You news! Ah," said Uncle Vernon in a triumphant whisper. "Get out of、uh, that one, boy! As if we, as if we, as if we didn't didn't know you get all your news from those from those pestilent or from those pestilent or birds." Here we hesitated for a moment. It cost him something to tell the truth this time, even though his aunt. And Uncle could not, could not, possibly know how, how bad Harry felt at admitting it. The hours aren't bringing me news," said Harry tonelessly. "I don't believe it," said Aunt Petunia at once. "No more do I," said Uncle Vernon forcefully. "We know you are up to something funny," said Aunt Petunia. We are not stupid, you know," said Uncle Vernon. "Well, that's news to me," said Harry, his temper rising. And before the Dursleys could call him to call him back, he had wheeled about, crossed crossed the front lawn, stepped over the low garden wall, and was and was striding off up the street. He was in trouble now, and he knew it. He would have to face. His aunt and his his aunt and uncle later and played the price for his rudeness, but he did did not did not care very much just at the moment. He had much more much more pressing matters on his mind. On his mind, he here we were sure that the quacking noise had had been made by by someone. A P P A R A T I N G or D I S A P P A R A T I N G. It was it was exactly the sound Dolby, the house elf made when he vanished into thin air. Was it possible that Dolby was here in Pivot Drive? Could Dolby be be following him right at this very moment? As th as this thought occurred, he wheeled around. And and still and still, back down Pivot Drive, but it appeared to to be completely deserted again. And Harry was sure that Dobby did did not know how to become invisible. Invisible. 
He walked on, hardly aware of the route he were he was taking, for he had for he had pounded these streets these streets so so often lately that his feet carried him to to his favorite haunts automatically. Every few steps he glanced back over his shoulder somewhat magically had had been had been near him as he lay among Amphitronium's dying pagonias. He was sure of it. Why hadn't they spoken to him? Why hadn't they they made contact? Well, why were why were they hiding now? And then, uh, as his feeling of frustration peaked, his certainty looked away, looked away, leaked away. Perhaps it, it hadn't been a magical sound after all. Perhaps he was so desperate for the teeniest sign of contact from the world to which he he belonged that he that he was simply overreacting to perfect to perfectly ordinary noises. Could he be sure it had? It hadn't been the sound of, some, of something breaking inside a neighbor's house. Harry felt a dull, sinking sen sensation in his, in his stomach. And before he, he knew it, the feeling of hopelessness that had, that had plagued him. All summer rolled over him once again. Tomorrow morning, he would, he would be awoken. By the by, the alarm at five at five o'clock, so that he could pay the so that he could pay the hour that delivered the daily profit. But was there any point in continuing to take it? Harry merely glanced at the front page before throwing it aside these days. When the idiot who ran. The, the paper finally realized that Baltimore was back. It would, it would be headline news. And that was the, the only kind Harry cared about. Cared about. If he was lucky, there, were, there would also be hours carrying letters from his best friends, Ron and Herman G. Though any, though any explanation he had, he had, he had, he had, had. That that the letters would bring him would bring him 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 him, him news had long had long since been dashed. We can't say much about you know what. Obviously, we have been told not to not to say anything important in case our letters go astray. We are quite busy, but I can't but I can't give give you details here. There's a fair, there's a fair amount going on. We will tell you everything when we see you. When we see you. But when were they going to see him? Nobody seemed too bothered with a precise date. Hermione had scribbled. I, ex I expect we will be, 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 be seeing you quite soon inside his birthday card. Inside his birthday card, but how soon was soon? As as far as Harry could tell, from the vacants in in the letters, Hermione and Ron were in the same place, presumably at Ron's parents' house. He he could he could he could he could hardly bear to think uh, of the pair with them having fun. At the burrow when he was stuck in Pivot Drive. In fact, he was so angry at them that he had that he had thrown both the, the birthday presents of Honey Duke's chocolates away unopened. Though he had he had regretted this after eating the wiltering salad and petunia had provided for dinner that night. That night, and what were Juan and Hermione busy with? Why wasn't he, Harry, busy? Hadn't hadn't he proved himself capable of handle of, of handling much more than they had? They had they all forgotten? Had they all forgotten what he had? Had they all forgotten what he had done? 
hadn't it been he who who went into the grave the graveyard and watched Cedric be murdered and been tied to to that tombstone and nearly killed and nearly killed. Don't think about that, Harry told himself strongly for the hundredth time that summer. It was bad enough that he kept that he kept revisiting the graveyard in his night in his nightmares, with, without dwelling on on it in in his waking moments too. He turned the corner on to Magolia Crescent. Halfway along, halfway along, he passed the narrow alleyway down the side of Echo Lodge, where he where he had first first clapped eyes on his on his godfather. Cyrus at least seemed to to to, to understand how Harry was feeling. Admittedly, his letters were just as empty a proper news as Ron and Amongee's, but at least the they, they they contain, but at least they contain words of caution and consolation in, instead of tantalizing hints. I know this M must be frustrating for you. Keep keep your nose clean, and everything will be okay. Be careful, be careful, and don't do anything rash. Anything rash. Well thought, Harry. As he crossed Magolia Crescent, turned into Magolia Road, and, he and headed toward the darkening play park, he he had he had by and by and large done a serious advice. He had he at least resisted the temptation to tie his trunk to his broomstick and set off for the borough by himself. In fact, Harry thought his behavior had. Happened very good consi considering how frustrated and angry he felt at being stuck in Privet Drive, this long reduced to hiding in flower beds in the hope uh, of, hear of hearing something that, that might that might that might point to to what Lord Baltimore was doing. Nevertheless, it was quite galling to be, to be told not not. To, to be rashed by a man who who had served twelve years in the wizard prison Azkaban escaped uh, escaped att attempted attempted to commit the murder he had been he had been he had been he had been, he had been convicted convicted from for convicted for in the in the first in the first place then they gone on the one with a stolen hippogriff. Harry bolted over the locked park gate and set off across the parched grass. The park was as empty as the surrounding streets. When he reached the swings he sank he sank onto the only one that Dudley and his friends had not had not yet managed to break. The boy called one arm around the train and stared moodily at the ground. At the ground. He would not be able to hide in the Dursley's flower bed again tomorrow. He would have to think uh, of, some fresh, of, of some fresh way of listening to the news. In the meantime, he had nothing to, to look forward to. But another restless, disturbed night, be because, because even because it, because even when he he escaped nightmares about about Cedric, he had he had unsettling dreams up about long dark corridors, all finishing in dead ends and locked doors, which he which he supposed had something to do with. The, with the trap feeling he had when he was awake. Often the old scar on his forehead pricked uncomfortably, but he did but he did not fool himself that one or Armani or Sirius would find would find that very very interesting anymore. 
In the past, his car, his car Harding had worn the Baltimore was the Baltimore was was getting was getting stronger again. But now the Baltimore was back was back. They would they would probably remind him that that a regular irritation will was only to be to be expected. Nothing to worry about old news. Old news. The injustice of of it all of it all welled up inside him so that he wanted to yell with fury. If it hadn't been for him, nobody would even would, would even have not have known. Baltimore was back. And his and his reward and his reward was to be stuck in little little Wingington for 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 four solid weeks, com- completely cut off from the magical world, reduced reduced to squatting reduced to squatting among dry begonias, so that he could hear so that he could hear about water skiing. B u d g e r I G A R S. How could how could Dumbledore have have forgotten him so easily? Why had Ron and Hermione got got to got together without inviting him along to along to? How much longer was he supposed to endure Sirius telling him to sit tight and be a good boy? Or or was this the the temptation? To write to the stupid daily prophet, and point out that Baltimore had returned. Had returned. These furious thoughts whirled around in Harry's head, and his insides withered, withered with anger as a salt dry, velvety night fell around him. The air, the air full of the smell of warm, dry grass, and the only sound. And the only sound that are the low grumble of traffic on the road beyond beyond the park railings. Railings. He did not know how long he had sat on the swing before. Before, the sound of voices interrupted his musings, and he looked up. The street lamps from the surrounding roads were casting a misty a mist. A misty glow, a misty glow, strong enough to silhouette a group of people making th- their way across the park. One of them was singing a loud, crude song. The others were laughing. A soft ticking noise, a soft ticking noise came came from several expensive racing bikes that they were that they were wheeling along, along. Harry knew who those people were. The people in the picture in front was was unmistakably his cousin Julie Dursley, wending his way his way his way home, accompanied by his faithful gang. His faithful gang. Dursley was as fast as ever, but he but he was hard dieting, and the discovery uh, of a new of a new talent had had wrought quite a change in his physique, as Uncle Vernon delightedly told anyone who would listen. Dudley had Dudley had recently become the junior heavyweight inter interscore boxing champion of the Southeast. Of the Southeast. The noble sport, as Uncle Vernon called it, had made Dudley even more formidable than he had than he had seemed to Harry in the primary school days when he when he had served as Dudley's first punching bag. Harry was not remotely afraid of his cousin any more, but he still didn't think that 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 Dudley the Dudley. Learning to punch harder and more accurately was cause for celebration. For celebration, 
neighborhood children all around were terrified of him. Even more, even more, even more terror, terrified than than they were of of that part of that part of the of that part of of that part of boy who had who they had they had been warned was was a hardened um was a hardened ah uh, was a hardened H O O L I G A N who attended Saint Brutus Secure Secure Center for Incurable for Incurable Criminal Boys. Women are boys. Harry watched the dark figures crossing the grass and wondered whom they had they had been beating up tonight. Look around Harry found himself thinking as he watched them. Come on. Look around. I'm I'm sitting here all alone. Come and have a go. If Dolly's friends saw him sitting here, they would be sure to to make a beeline for him, and what and what would Dooley do then? He wouldn't want to to lose face in front of the game, but he'd be terrified of provoking Harry. It would be really fun to watch Dudley's diploma, to taunt him, watch him, watch him, watch him with with him with him with him powerless. To respond, and if any of the others tried tried hitting Harry, Harry was ready. He had his wand. Let them try. He'd love to vent some uh, of his frustration on the boys who had who had who had once made his life hell. Made his life hell, but they, but they did did not turn around. They did not see him. They were they were almost at the railings. Harry mastered mastered the impulse to call after them. After them. Seeking a fight was not a smart move. He must not use magic. He would he would be he would be risking explosion again. Dudley's gang gang's voices died. They were out of they were they were out of sight. Heading heading along Magolia Road. Road. There you go, Sarah's here without Dolly. Nothing was kept. My nose my my nose clean. Exactly the opposite of what you'd have done. He got to his feet and stretched. And Petunia and I got on in and I got on and seemed. Do you feel that that whenever uh, that whenever Dudley turned up were, was the right time to be home? And any time after that was much too late. Uncle Vernon had threatened to lock Harry in the shed if he came home after Dudley again. So stifling a yawn, scale scowling, Harry set off toward the park gate. Magolia woke like pivot drive. Was full of large square houses with perfectly marked lawns, all owned by large, by large square owners, who who drove very clean, very clean cars similar to Uncle Vernon's. Harry, pref, Harry preferred little wing, little winging by night, when when the curtain windows made patches a jewel, a jewel. Bright colors and the darkness. Anywhere, anywhere, no danger of hearing disapproving mutters about about his delinquent appearance. When he passed the householders, he walked quickly, so that halfway along Magolia Road, Dudley's Dudley's gang came into view again. They were saying their farewells at the entrance to Magolia Crescent. Harry stepped into the shadow of a large lyric tree and waited. And waited. Squealed like a pig, didn't he? Malcolm was saying, was saying to, was saying to, G-U-F-F-A-W-L-S. From the others, 
Nice white, nice white hook, Big D said. P I E R S. Same time tomorrow, said Dudley. Wound, wound at my, my place. My parents are out, said, said Gordon. See you then, said Dudley. Bye, dude. See ya, Big D. Harry waited for the rest of the game. Of the game. Of the game. To, 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 to move on. Before, before setting off again, when the voices had faded once more, he headed around the corner into Magolia Crescent, and by walking very quickly, he he soon he soon he soon came without you he soon came came within hailing distance of Dolly, who was strolling along at his ease. Humbling, humbling, tunisly. Hey, Big D. Dudley Ton, oh, he grunted. It's you. How long have you be, have you been Big D then? Said Harry. Shut it, now, old Dudley. Turning away again, cool name. Said Harry, grinning and falling into step beside his cousin. But you will, but you will always. Always be Ikku I C K L E D I D D Y K I N S to me. I, s I said shut it, said Dudley, who whose ham like ants had called into fist. Don't the don't the the boys know that that's what your mom calls you. Shut your face. You you don't? You don't. Tell her to shut her face. What about P O P K I N and Dinky and Dinky Dada Dums? Can I use them then? Dudley said nothing. The, the effort of keeping himself from hitting Harry seemed, seemed to be to be demanding all his self control. So who, so who have, so who have, you, you been, you been, you, you been, you been beating up tonight, Harry asked, his grand fading, another ten-year-old? I know, I know you did, Mark, Mark Evans, two nights ago. He was asking for a snarl, Dudley, oh yeah? He checked me, yeah? Did he say you you look like a pig that's been that's been taught to walk on, to walk on its hind legs? Cause that's not cheek, Doug. Doug, that's true. That's true. A muscle was stretching in Dudley's jaw. It gave Harry enormous satis satisfaction to know how furious he was making. He was making Dudley, he felt, as though he was siphoning off his own, frust his own frustration into his cousin, the only outlet he had. He had. They turned right down the narrow alleyway, where Harry had had for St. Sarah's, and which formed a shortcut between Magolia Crescent and was see a walk. It was empty and much darker than the than the than and much darker than the the than the streets it, it linked because because there were no street lamps. The footsteps were muffled be between garage walls on one on one side and a high fence on the other. Think you are a big man carrying that thing, don't you? Dudley said after a few seconds. What thing? That, that thing you were hiding, Harry grinned again. Not, not as stupid uh, as you, as you look, are you, Dud? But, but I, but I suppose if you, if you are, you wouldn't be able to walk and talk at the same time.
at the same time. I don't know. Here we pulled out this one. He's a Dudley. Look sideways at it. You are not allowed, Dudley said at once. I know you are not. You get you get expelled from that from that freak school you go to. How do you you know they they haven't changed the rules, Big D. They haven't, said Dudley, though. He didn't. He didn't sound completely convinced. Harry laughed softly. You haven't got the guts to to take me to take me on without that thing, have you, Dudley? Now, will we use you? J just need just need four four mates be behind you before before you can can beat up a ten year old. You you know. You know that 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 boxing title you keep you keep banging banging on about how old was your point was your opponent seven eight he was sixteen for your information now Dudley and he was out cold for, for twenty minutes after after I I after I I finished with him. And he was twice as heavy as you. You ju you just you you just wait till I tell I tell Dad you had that that thing that thing out. Running to Daddy now uh, are you? Is 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 I C K L Y boxing champ boxing champ frightened of nasty Harry's wand not. This brave, not this brave at night, are you, snailed, Dudley? That this is right, Dickens. That's why. That's what we we call it when it when it when it goes when it goes all dark like this. I mean, when you are in bed, Dudley snailed. He had stopped. He had stopped walking. Here we stopped to staring at his cousin. From the from the little he could he could see of Dudley's lost face. He was wearing a strangely triumphant look. What do you mean? I am I am not brave. In bed, said Harry, completely nonplussed. Nonplussed. What? What? Am I am I supposed to be frightened of pillows or something? I heard you last night," said Dudley breathlessly, "talking in your, in your sleep, moaning. What do you mean?" Harry said again, but there was a cold, plunging sensation in his stomach. He had revisited the graveyard last night in his dreams. In his dreams, Dudley gave a harsh bark, a laughter. Then, then adopted a high pitch, whimpering voice. Don't care, Cedric. Don't care, Cedric. Cedric. Who's Cedric? Your boyfriend. I. You are lying," said Harry automatically. But his mouth had gone had gone dry. He he knew Dudley wasn't lying. How else would he, would he know about Cedric? Dad, help me, Dad. He's going to to, to to kill me, Dad. Boo hoo! Shut up," said Harry quietly. "Shut up, Dudley. I'm warning you. Come and and help me and help me, Dad. Mom, come, come and help me. He's killed. He's killed, Cedric. Dad, help me. He's going to. Don't don't you point that." Thing at me, Dudley. Dudley backed into the alley wall. Harry was pointing the the wand directly at Dudley's heart. Harry could, Harry could, could feel, could feel, for fourteen years hatred of Dudley pounding in his veins. 
Yeah, you know, counting in his, in his counting in his veins. What? What wouldn't? What wouldn't? He gave to strike now to jinx Dudley so thoroughly he'd have to to crawl home like an insect. Struck down, sprouting fiddlers. Don't ever, don't ever talk about that again, Harry Snail. Do you understand me? Do you understand me? Point that, point that, point that thing somewhere else. I said, do you understand me? Point it somewhere else. Do you understand me? Get that thing away from. Dolly gave an odd, shuddering gasp, as though he had he had been doused in icy water. Something had had happened to the night. The star-strewn indigo sky was suddenly pitch black and lightless. The stars, the moon, the misty street lamps at either end of the alley, <laughs> of the alley had vanished. The distant grumble of cars and the whimper of trees had gone. The the balmy evening were was suddenly piercing, personally bitterly cold. They were surrounded by total impenetrable, impenetrable, silent, silent darkness, as though some some giant hand had dropped a thick, icy mantle over the over the and over the over the entire over the entire alleyway, blinding them. For a split second, Harry Harry thought he had he had he had done magic. With, without meaning to, despite the fact that he had that he had been, been resisting as hard as he as he could, then it, then then his then his reason caught up with his senses. He didn't have the power to turn off the stars. He turned his head his head this way and that, trying to see something, but the dark. But the darkness pressed on his eyes like a weightless veil. Dudley's terrified voice broke in Harry's ear. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? What are you, are you do, do, doing? Stop, stop it. I am not doing anything. Shut up and don't move. I can't, can't see. I have, I have. Gone blind eye. I said, "Shut up." Here we stood, stock stared, turning his sightless eyes left and right. The cold was so intense that he was shivering all over. Goosebumps. Had he wept it up his arms, and the hairs on the back of his neck were were standing up. He opened his he opened his eyes. To the fullest extent, staring, staring blankly around, unseen, unseen. It was impossible. They couldn't be here. Not and little ringing. He strained his ears. He would, he would hear them before he saw them. I will, I will tell, tell Dad. Dudley whimpered. Will, will. Where are you? What are you? What are you, D.O.? Will you shut up? Here we is. I'm trying to L.I.S. But he fell silent. He had heard. He had heard. Just the, just the thing, just the thing. He had, he had been dreading. There was something in the alleyway apart from, from the south. Something that was, that was drawing, that was drawing long. Horse, rattling breaths, rattling breaths. Harry felt a horrible jolt, a dread, uh, as he stood trembling in the freezing air. Cut, cut it out! Stop doing it! I will hit, hit! I will hit you! I swear I will! Dudley, shut! Wham! A fist. A fist made contact with the side of Harry's head, lifting Harry off his feet. Small, small, white lights pop in front of Harry's eyes. 
for for the second time in an hour he felt as though his head his head ha had been cleaved in had been cleaved in too. Next moment he had landed hard on the ground and his wand had blown out of his hand of his hand. You moron, Dudley Harry yelled, his eyes watering with pain as he scrambled to his hands and knees, now feeling around frantically. In the blackness he heard he heard Dudley blowing away, hitting, hitting. The alley fence stumbling Dudley, come back. You are run you were running white, white added. There was a horrible squealing yell, and Dudley's footsteps stopped. Stopped. At the same moment, Harry felt a creeping chair be behind behind him. That could that could mean only one thing. There was more than one. Dudley, keep your keep your your mouth shut. Shut. Whatever you you do. Whatever you do, keep your mouth shut, warned, Harry muttered frantically, his hands flying over the ground like spiders, where's, where's Juan? Come on, L-U-M-O-S. He, he said, he said, he said, the spell automatically, desperate for light, to help him in his search, and to, and to his unbelieving relief, light flared inches, from it, from his right hand, the wing, the wand, the wand tip had ignited. Harry snatched it up, scrambling to his feet and turned around. And turned around. His stomach turned over. A towering hooded figure was blinding smooth, smoothly toward him, hovering over the ground. No feet. No feet. Or face, or face visible beneath its roof, sucking on the on the night as it came stumbling backward. Harry raised his wand. E x p e c t o p t r o n u m. A silvery whips of a a vapor shot from the tip of the wand, and the and the and the Demeter slowed. But this, but this, but the spell. Hadn't worked properly, uh, properly, tipping over his feet. Harry retreated further as the Demeter bore down upon him, panic fogging his brain. Fogging his brain, concentrate. A pair of gray, slimy, scabby, scabbed hands, scabbed hands, slid, slid, slid. From inside the Demeter's ropes, reaching for him, a rushing noise filled Harry's ears. E X P E C T O P A T R O N U M. His voice sounded dim and distant. Another whips, a silver, a silver smoke pepper law. Then the last drifted from the wand. He couldn't, he couldn't do it anymore. He couldn't walk the spell. There was laughter inside his inside his own head swell. High high pitched laughter. He could smell the Dementos pure with death cold. Death cold breath. Feeling his own lungs drowning him. Think. Think. Something happy. But there was no happiness in him. The Dementos icy fingers were were closing were closing on. His throat, the high, the high pitched laughter, was growing louder and louder, and a, and a voice spoke inside his head. Bow to death, bow to death, Harry. It might even be painless. It might even be painless. I would not know. I have, I have never died. I have never, I have never died. He was never going. To see Juan and Hermione again, and their faces burst clearly into into his mind as he fought for breath. E x p e c t o p p a t r o n u m. An enormous silver stag erupted 
from the tip of Harry's wand. As Adler's caught the Dementor in, in the place where, where, that where the heart should, should have been. Should have been. It was thrown backward, weightless as darkness, and as the stag charged, the Dementor swooped away, bad light, and defeated. And defeated. This way, Harry shouted at the stag, wheeling around. He sprinted down the alleyway, holding the holding the, the lit one aloft, Dudley, Dudley. He had won barely a dozen steps, dozen steps. When he reached on Dudley, was caught on the ground, his arms clamped, clamped over his face, or clamped over his face. A second Dementor was crunching low over him, gripping his wrists in his slimy hands, prizing, prizing them slowly, almost, almost lovingly apart, lowering its hooded head toward Dudley's face as though about to kiss him. About to kiss him. Get it, Harry, bellowed, and with a rushing, roaring sound, the silver stag he, ha he had conjured came, came galloping, came. Gallop came galloping back past him. The Dementor's eyeless face was barely an inch from Dudley's when the silver antlers caught it. The thing was thrown up into the air and, like its fellow, it soared away and was absorbed into the darkness. The stag countered to the end of the alleyway and dissolved into silver mist. Into silver mist. Moon, stars, and street lamps burst back into life. A warm breeze swept the alleyway. Trees rustled in neighboring gardens, and the moon and the mundane rumble of cars and in Magolia Crescent filled the air again. Here we stood quite still, all his senses vibrating. Taking, taking in that it brought return to normality. After a moment, he became aware that, it, that his t-shirt was sticking to him. He was drenched in sweat. In sweat. He could not believe what had just happened. Demeter's hair and little wingy. Dudley lay, lay curled up on the ground, whimpering and shaking. Harry bent down to to see whether whether he was in uh, to see whether he was he was in a fit fit state to stand up, but then heard loud running footsteps behind him. Instinctively raising his wand again, he spun on his heel to face the newcomer. To face the newcomer, Miss Pig, the batty old neighbor. Came panting into sight. Her grizzly, her grizzly, gray hair was escaping from its hairnet. From its hairnet, a clanking, a clanking string, string, a clanking string, stopping back was swinging, was swinging from her wrist, and her feet were halfway out of a, of a tall tan carpet slippers. Harry, Harry made to stow. Is to stow his wand wholly out of sight, but don't put it away, idiot boy, she shrieked. What is there? Or oh, all more with them around. Oh, I am going to care. M U N D U N G U S F L E T C H E R. Okay, that's the end of chapter one. Okay, bye bye.